Hey, welcome to Tools on Tech, and this time I wanted to talk about how I'm using Make.com to generate Instagram images from my Notion. One of the things that I really wanted to automate for a long while is to have all my content creation happening straight from one spot. Now, I don't really care about what the single source of truth was, but Notion felt like the natural fit because I already keep track of my whole process in there. Now, of course, I could make these images myself and if you're making anything specific then yes yes i would like to generate it myself and build it up like that but there's also a lot of the well ongoing things that i want to post i make a nice quote slash screenshot and i want to post that to instagram and have my branding around it that's one of the reasons to automate it i have a new video up i wanted to automate it that's one of the reasons i wanted to automate it so that's also how i started with the process now i'm going to take you through the full process here and that means that we're going to go what i do to get started how i make up the steps then go through make.com there's going to be some html css but it's going to be really basic and well explained and after this you should be able to make your own instagram post now as far as i know checking make.com the only paid feature that i'm using currently is twitter which is paid so if you just want to post to instagram you should be able to do this without having any costs and there's a little limit on the image generation which is up to 50 images for free per month that was well enough for my use case i only want like one image a day and if i do hit that then i'll probably pay for it but for testing it out and getting things working this should be more than enough so whenever i start one of these processes i start with a wish list and the wish list is just what do i want this thing to do and that's good to get started with because then you also know which problems you have to solve now if i'm looking on my slide here my wish list was that i wanted to have all my content in one place i mostly focus on youtube and twitter but I also wanted to post towards LinkedIn and Instagram. So those were the four things that I wanted to get working and automated. Then I wanted to eliminate any manual work uh, and that's mostly on the basic Instagram posts, but also I use the same images on LinkedIn. And that means that I wanted to automate the steps that I currently do by hand in Krita. I only wanted it to post one time a day. Uh, that's a personal thing of mine. Uh, I I like having to fiddle with buttons and say like, okay, it needs to be in free, but it's always free for me. Uh, feels like extra steps, extra thinking. So I set it up that I just chuck it to a day and on that day, there will be a fixed time and it will be posted out. And I don't have to think about what time in the day. I might could mix it up to go to like twice a day, but then time comes back into play. And for me, once a day automated stuff is enough. If I have to post more than I usually just do it by hand, because I'm messing with things and I say like, oh, this is awesome, I wanna tell you, and then go to Twitter and post it there. And of course, finally, I wanna see the result of this back in Notion, so that when I look at my content calendar, I can see it. And to give a quick example of how that looks in effect, if I go to my Notion calendar overview, it's not as full as I would like it because I'm super lazy when it wasn't automated, I'm starting to fill it up right now, but I'm busy making this video. So what you can see here is then in the icon in the corner shows like it's a tweet, it's LinkedIn, it's Instagram, a really small picture of the photo that I got attached to it. And then because it says published, it means that that one is already sent out to the world. This is the current date. It says ready to publish, which is requirement because if it's not ready to publish, it won't post it. And then here prepare and it's a yellow color. So a uh, blue color, colors really difficult. It's a blue color because um, that way, looking at the college, I know I need to do something there because this is not done yet. This is ready, I can just wait for it to get published and I can easily move things around. So if I wanted to you know, tweet this later, I can just drag it to another day and now it will publish next week on Thursday. Move it back because you know I had a plan here. Excellent, so that's the content calendar, how it works. And then we get into thinking about the actual process. So then once I have my wish list, I go into process. So like, what are the steps that I need to take to get this working? So it starts with Notion. Notion is gonna be my golden source to speak of. It's the place where I keep track of everything, where I see everything in an overview, where I have my calendar view. So that's the starting point. I need to make sure that all the data I need is in Notion because if I need to add anything afterwards, that would be pointless. 
Then it's gonna get picked up by Make. Make does the automations from my end, so it's gonna query Notion, get the data that it needs, and then take on to the next steps. Something magic needs to happen. Uh, I didn't know how to solve it yet when I was making this process in my head. I was going like, something magic needs to happen. I need to make these images and get them posted. And then finally, it needs to go to Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. The only exception here is YouTube because YouTube I always do by hand because I have to upload the video and usually that URL is the one I need for all my other things. I might automate it in the future, but currently I'll just take the couple of manual steps for that. So once you're getting to this whole I need Notion, I need to know what data do I need inside Notion that I can automate the rest. Some of these I figured out along the way, so I'll talk about those in sets. Things that I already had were type. So is this a tweet? Is it an Instagram post? Is it for LinkedIn? That's good, that was already there. Uh, one that I don't have right now, but I'm probably gonna add is template. And then template's gonna make like different if then statements so I can make different templates and different layouts. Now I just have one layout and I'm gonna keep it like that in this video because I wanna keep things simple. Publish date, obviously. If you don't know when to publish it, I don't know when to run the script and this whole thing of scheduling posts would be a bit of a moot point then the image which was also obvious and then the thing that wasn't obvious i first just did like social text and then i discovered that an image can only keep like a very limited amount of text or i would have to start out to adjusting fonts which would be absolutely dreadful um so i said okay i need to split that up and i made like an image text which is a short couple of words that i'm going to post on the instagram like on the picture and a social text which is longer which is the accompanying text that's under it and that usually has like a much longer set i mean you're not going to write like war and peace in there but it definitely takes up more than four or five words now to show you that data in effect you can see the type of content instagram ready to publish which was information that i needed to know then the uh, image text and social text so you see like a really short image text live stream tomorrow and then the social text which is longer and explains what i'm talking about the URL, this is something that I didn't think about when I was starting, but I did want it to add. I already had a URL field. The only thing I did is like in the end of the script, I said like, hey, if you're posting the social text, just add a space in URL to the end. Um, then the actual tube nail that it needs to use. And as you can see, that one doesn't have any branding around it. This is the core image that will be used later on when we're generating the Instagram stuff and then publish for tomorrow. So that's the information. If I put this in Notion now, I don't have to think about it. It will just be auto released. This will go live tomorrow, I believe. So tomorrow, roughly between three and four, I believe, this will go up and it will be there. Right, so now that I have the data, I need to get this out of Notion and into my social media and in between do that magic that generates the image. And for that, we're gonna use Make. This is the current script and we're going to do a really quick overview and then just focus on this top one here because that's the magic that I want to discuss and the rest is the similar thing but just a little bit of mix up and steps. You get the first point here which is fetch it from Notion, then it goes to a router, then it decides depending on type where it needs to go, so Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, everything else. Then if it goes to everything else, I mark it down that I don't want to process it anymore and the rest it takes extra steps. Generating images, sending it towards their respective social media platforms. So sending it to Instagram, sending it to LinkedIn, sending it to Twitter. I will dive deeper into this right after this. This is just a quick overview. And then finally updating Notion to inform it that it's done. You don't need to do anything with it in the future. Now let's go through this step by step. And then the first step is getting the data out of Notion. So what I do here is I have a Notion connection. This one connects to my Notion and to the databases. I connect to a specific database, which is my content database. And I say, hey, I would like to filter everything that has a published date that is either on or before now, meaning that I don't care that it's like published for yesterday. If the script didn't run yesterday and it runs today, I still want it to publish because I'm behind schedule. Just chuck it out there, you know, the worst that happens is that people get two posts at the same time. Um, and that will rarely happen because Make is pretty solid on running every day. Uh, and you can see in the corner as well that it's set to run daily at nine plus four. So that's my daily post date, CET, send it out nine plus four. That captures people in Europe, but as well as all the people that I have in the States. Uh, it might be a bit late for the other side of the world, but you know, I have to make a choice. It's not that I love you guys any less. 
it's just, you know, I have to pick a slot and there's 24 hours in a day and there's always somebody sleeping or hopefully enjoying a good whiskey. Then the other one is a bit of a hack and that is in make, I can't filter on status. And what that means is that I can say like, give me everything that's ready to publish. So to hack around it, I added an extra property in Notion that's just a check mark that says published by make. And if that one isn't checked, then it shows up in this list. And then it's limited to 10, which is usually enough because I don't schedule 10 things in the same time. Finally, it goes to the router and then the bottom one is important for me. So that one has a filter that says like, hey, this is a fallback route. And that means that if none of the other things matches, it always goes here. And what this does, and it's basically the same for all the other Notion things, is it takes that item. So it says database page item and takes page ID, which comes from the one here. And you can see that as well as the five in front of it. And if I select it, it starts pulsing. Um, take that idea and just set one thing, and that is set that check mark to done. And that means that it will no longer show up when it's fetching items and it will start ignoring it. And that's what I like because I don't want it to daily show all the YouTube things that I didn't update or if I'm behind. Uh, and the worst thing that happens is that if I do update and then want it published, I just have to uncheck that boxing notion and everything will be fine. And I can quickly show that one. So for example, this is my YouTube video. This one has the published by make and this one should be checked. So I have a bug in there, but I believe I fixed that yesterday. So this should be working fine tomorrow or it might be skipping because this one says published. Um, and so it doesn't show up in the filter. It's actually a small bug. So this is interesting. This is a nice example of a bug. So this one shows up because this filter here in the beginning says like, is it ready to publish? Because this one's already published. The check marks there and that means that every time this runs that thing will show up that gets me a subset of items and that's good because the subset of items is what i want i just want the things that are ready to be published then it picks a line uh, i'm gonna skip the twitter one because that one just posts a social text is very short i'm gonna skip the linkedin one because that one does exactly the same thing as the instagram one with the only notable exception is that linkedin doesn't take file urls but takes file data and for that you need to add the http thing which turns a url into an image data that you can then post we're going to focus on the image generation magic and instagram so we're looking at the acti API and what that does is it changes HTML and CSS into an image and I'll quickly open it so you can see it so you see like a lot of magic HTML happening here with a file URL in there and a plain text which gets the text from my image text and then some CSS and we're going to step through that but I'm going to explain how it builds that step by step so you can do the same thing or modify my code the code will be in the description so you'll be able to play around and fiddle with it and create your own tools on tech social posts until you change the images with your own branding. So to build those images, what I do is I layer them like a cake. So I'm not trying to make these perfect pixel font HTML images. I just build images of the same size. They're all square because Instagram uses square and I stack them on top of each other. The only exception is the tube nail. So if I'm looking at this, like the tube nail has a different shape and the text because the text gets generated by the HTML. And so what happens then is that in the HTML CSS, I just stack these things together. So what happens, it scrunches together and then it becomes like one image that I can post. And I'll give you a full lowdown of the code. I simplified it so even someone with no technical expertise can probably make the changes by adjusting a few of the variables and not changing too much around that. This is the HTML code. And as you can see, this is in text form, the layered cake that I was talking about. So this diff thing that's around it basically says like this square place, this is the Instagram block. It's a 1080 by 1080 square where all the images and stuff gets chucked into and then it gets layered. So the first layer is an image and that says source insta background so that's my background image it's a complete image that fills the background and then on top of that it puts something in the center which is the tube nail and it says file url here but i replace that and make with the tube nail url and then i get the overlay which is whatever goes on top uh, so in my case in the corner it says tools on tech 
And then finally, there's a class text where I can just chuck text in and that will generate a block of text. But you might wanna know how to change the CSS code or go into depth. So I'm just gonna go through the steps here. If you really don't care about it, feel free to skip ahead. First of all, I have the body where I say margin zero pixels, padding zero pixels. So anybody that does any CSS will tell you that web pages are built out of blocks and they have margins which are outside and padding which are inside. And because I wanna stack things exactly on each other, I don't care about these margins and paddings in most of the cases. So just to be sure, I'm zero padding it here and I'm zero padding it in the diff block and I'm fixing it to 1080 wide and 1080 top. This gives me a blank canvas to work on with no frills around it and that I like because that gives me an option to work on the rest. And the rest is first of all, all these image things that you saw, they get a position absolute, meaning like I don't care what the rest is doing, just chuck it on the top zero and left zero, meaning top left corner, it will be put there. And that means that as long as all the images are 1080 wide, 1080 high, and they're all placed on zero, they will be stacked exactly on top of each other. So let's talk the center. And what center does is a few tricks. It makes a block because the image, the thumbnail will be smaller than the overall set. So I make it relative, I make it a block, and that means that it gets to move around a bit. I say the top is 150 pixels from the top. So you take the top and you move 150 pixels down. Then I say wide is 80%, meaning that the image gets resized to 80% of the width of my image. And because I then say margin left and right auto, that means that left and right will get the same amount. It will be centered in the middle. Finally, I love drop shadows. Don't ask me why, it's just a thing that I like. So I put a filter in it and that says add a drop shadow under this image. That's for the image part. Then for the text, it's largely the same idea. Again, uh, this one uses a position absolute, but that's because I resized the block to fit the whole image. It says top left zero. That's the one you saw from the image before. And then I add padding to the top, which is 700 pixels, meaning that it moves 700 pixels down. Uh, and that's where the text gets placed. And then I have a max height of 380, meaning that I don't want this thing to be bigger than 380 pixels. If you count those two up, you get 1080, which is the size of the Instagram image that I'm building. Then it's just formatting of the actual bit of text. So I say a font size of 75 points. I make the color white. I say things like I want it aligned in center, I want everything uppercase, I want the font family to be a Verdana, and then I say font weight bold because I like bold letters, and again, drop shadow because, you know, I like drop shadow. This is all the CSS there is. You can use this verbatim, there's no copyright on it on my end or anything, just feel free to use it. If you put tools on tech on it, like put something else there, going like I'm just playing with this or testing it, whatever. And this is the end result. So what comes out is you can see like the bottom layer here, you see the overlay, which is this banner on the side, and it goes over the thumbnail that I basically shove in between and the text on the bottom. So that's what this element does. It does those exact same steps, and then I just replace the center image with the image that comes from Notion. So in this case, the file URL, and I'm changing the image text and I'm getting the plain text because I don't want any stuff around it. I want this to be basic. Just give me the plain text and I'll just convert it for the image. CSS doesn't change, it's exactly the same as it just shown. And this will generate me an image. And then once I have that image, I can simply go to Instagram for business. I say, put it on my tools on tech page. I put the image URL in. So this one comes straight from what I just generated. And then for the caption, I say, take that social text, the longer text, and give me the plain text version added as a caption and done. I don't have to specify a time to post it here because that's already done because this only runs at 69. Once it's posted, I go to Notion, I go to that exact same item and I update two fields. One is that check mark published by make, put it to yes. And the other one is I set the status because I can update the status here. So I think they're halfway through getting this fixed. So you might be able to just filter on status when you're working with it, but I say status is set to complete published and that means that it turns green. I know like it's published and it's done and it sets it to complete and that means that it's done and I'm super happy about this. That just means that it went for the whole set and I can see the end results and it does the same for the other ones. One of the hardest bit in this site is that you need to make your image available to the internet so that you can use it in this setup. Now what I did is I put it in a Netlify set, but that's a bit technical, but if you're a technical person you'll probably do that as well 
uh, I think the easiest solution that you have is putting it on a Notion page and then making that page publicly available by sharing to the web, going to the page and then copyright on the image and say copy image URL. You can then test it by going to an anonymous browser, pasting the image URL in the top bar and if it loads the image that will work fine in this setup and you can keep going with the rest of the steps. Um, it will be tricky the first time but once you have one of these set up you'll be building these like no thing because um, the same thing I noticed now that I have this I'm constantly going like oh I can tweak it and make it do a little bit more uh, good tip in this case anytime you start doing anything with make start with something simple you'll make it more complex in the time you see people posting those huge make diagrams on Twitter once in a while those things have grown nobody started out and built that as one thing they usually started with a small thing and then made it more complex and added to it and this is the best way to get from zero to an end result over time. And then I wanted to do a live demo. This is like the worst example I'm ever going to do, but I'm going to do a live demo. I'm going to show you how it works. So if you follow me on Instagram, then you'll see this image because I'm just going to be posting it live and you can look it up. So we're going to go to today. And I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to make an Instagram post. I'm going to say it's prepared because I'm still working on it. It's assigned to me. I'm going to make the image test. Doing a live test while recording. Because showing things in video is cool. Now, there's no URL. I'm going to publish it today. It's not going to be oh, it's actually related to this project. So that's going to be the notion to social process. Everything is done. The only thing it needs is an image. Now I'm going to make a quick image with my phone because that would make it a true live demo. Remember, if you're watching and you're looking this up on Instagram, I'm looking at you. So I'm going to go to notion and it's already opening the instagram post one of the nice things is because i was editing this it shows the instagram post button then i'm going to go there and i'm going to go to files which should be in here somewhere da -da -da, files and media add a file and of course a car comes by when i'm doing a live demo pick the picture and say done now and immediately i see the picture showing up on my screen it's done I'm gonna switch her to ready to publish and then now everything is done I'm gonna go to my notion content calendar and do run once it's fetching stuff from notion and it went to the router it created the image it's posting it to Instagram and then it goes straight to notion updating it there there's a couple of things I can do to show you what happened if I look in the data uh, I see like this whole structure here and then there's property values and then I can see things like uh, let's see the social text open that one type text playing yeah, because showing things on video is cool and there you have it doing a live test while recording this shows the image I'll keep it on Instagram so you can look it up and then be sure to like it in the corner or put some information in the side like hey i'm watching the video right now i would find that absolutely awesome now remember you're awesome keep it up and if you get any questions feel free to hit me up in the comments hit me up on twitter i love helping people with getting this working if they're stuck on something and if i get a lot of questions on the same set i'll just make another video